Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Mystery Box Function Challenge. In the purple Mystery Box, there is some math, and your challenge is to figure out what it is. You can use the link in the description if you want to try this out on your own, and when you've got an idea, come on back and see if we get the same thing. All right, let's start with a zero. Okay, so zero gives us negative three. How about a one? One gives us zero. How about a two? So we're already off the graph at 21 there. So that's quite a steep curve. It's definitely a curve because it goes up three on this interval. And then on the next interval, it goes up 21. So that's a lot. Hmm. All right, let's try a negative one. Aha. And I was wondering whether this would go up and maybe have symmetry or go down. Now that it's gone down, and I know this is a curve and it's down on the left and up on the right, I'm thinking something. Are you thinking the same thing? I'm thinking cubic. And, you know, that's that curve that accelerates pretty rapidly to the left and right, and then it flattens out in the middle. So I kind of want to look at the middle a little closer. So let's put in one half. Uh huh, and negative one half just to be symmetrical here. So that confirms it for me. Any any points further to the left or right are just going to be off the graph. I think we've got a, a cubic function with some kind of multiplier on it. And then, you know, if this is the center of our function, it looks to be, instead of being at the origin, it's been moved down three. So at the end of our function, we're going to have a minus three to move the whole thing down three. And then we're going to have the x cubed, and there needs to be nothing in parentheses here because we're not moving it over left or right. And then we've got some kind of multiplier. And uh, where we look for the multiplier is one space to the left or right. Uh, because if you had, if you put in one here, one cubed uh, minus, well, we can ignore the minus three, one cubed, so it's, it should move it by one. In this case, we go up one, two, three. So there must be a multiplier of three. So I think this is what's going on here, 3 times 1 cubed minus 3. That gives us 0 here, and that makes sense. That's what we're getting with 1. Let's actually try this um, with a couple other values here. Let's go ahead and put in that 2. So 3 times 2 cubed minus 3. So 2 cubed is 8, so 3 times 8 minus 3. Well, that's 24 minus 3 is 21. Aha, uh -huh. that's what we're getting there. And let's try it with one of these negative values. So let's put in, oh, well, let's go ahead and put in that negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 cubed, oops, cubed minus 3. Well, negative 1 cubed is still going to be a negative 1. When you square it, it becomes positive. When you cube it, it stays negative. So that 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then minus 3 would be negative 6, and that's what we're getting. So I think we've got this one sorted. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, 3x cubed minus 3, and let's graph that as well. And you can see that typical cubic function, just a little a little stretched out. It's uh, accelerated in how fast it goes up and down by that multiplier. Well, how did that go for you? Did you get cubic? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.